I think that there have been um, several uh, photographs of uh, the American flag that have become iconographic. Uh, the uh, Iwo Jima flag raising, for example, and uh, uh, certainly the photograph of me, and there have been others. And uh, it's an important photograph because uh, the flag is a symbol of a set of values uh, that uh, we would like to see propagated around the world. Their values of, of equity and fairness and opportunity and, and uh, uh, values that say that uh, when one is uh, in America, uh, there's an expectation that one is going to be treated fairly and equitably. And when the flag is abused in the way that it was in that photo, uh, it, it, it resonates among all kinds of people around the world that maybe uh, the values are somehow being tainted, compromised, uh, and that we need to really reflect on what's going on beneath the surface of the image itself uh, to reflect in a way that then leads to action that then reinforces the best we can be rather than uh, manifesting um, our darker and uh, lesser side. I had had the opportunity to uh, meet and have conversations with Whitney Young, who was uh, then the uh, head of the National Urban League. Uh, and what Whitney said to all of us who were young people of color uh, was that we could never choose the moment when we might be called upon to make a statement or to take an ethical position that truly expressed our sense of conscience and our values. We couldn't choreograph or plan when that moment would take place, but we always needed to be ready for the fact that it might. And so within moments after being attacked on City Hall Plaza, I knew uh, that uh, this was the moment when I was going to have to gather my thoughts and say whatever needed to be said that would both uh, indicate my sense of values and the sense of values that uh, needed to be articulated in the city about the inappropriateness of uh, continue pa continuing patterns of of uh, racism in the city. But I also knew that um, uh, there was uh, a moment that had come to me uh, to step up um, and to uh, be that thing that uh, my past and uh, my parents and that uh, people who had inspired me uh, would have expected me to step up to, to do and to say. By the time I got to college, I'd been involved in civil rights activities enough so that I came to be elected uh, head of the Yale Civil Rights Council. When the march uh, at Selma was announced, there were uh, a number of us who felt that we needed to be in the South uh, to support that march. And uh, I was able to connect with uh, a couple of divinity students uh, who were white, uh, who wanted to join the march. Uh, and uh, when they saw I was black, uh, we had some deep discussion, and, and as uh, uh, very ethical uh, individuals, they felt the three of us needed to go together. And there was one morning when we drove into a little town in Alabama and tried to get a cup of coffee. And the moment the three of us, uh, the two white guys and myself, uh, sat down at the counter, it was clear uh, that uh, the local people felt that uh, we shouldn't be there um, and that we were uh, Yankee carpetbaggers who were trying to disrupt uh, a, a way of life in the South. And we sat and um, asked for coffee and uh, no one would talk to us. And then finally uh, the waitress, white waitress, came up to us and uh, she had tears in her eyes. 
uh, and she looked at us and she simply said, boys, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'd like to, but I just can't do it. And uh, we realized at that point that we were putting someone local at risk. Uh, and that was not our intention. Our, our goal was just to get some coffee and breakfast. And so we left. Um, and uh, as we left, uh, we were followed out of town by uh, a pickup truck with uh, the classic uh, gun rack in the back. And we had to think about Chern Cheney, Schwerner, and Goodman, who um, also uh, had been in, in a situation like that um, and who um, ended up being killed. There's a narrative that has arisen out of Boston in the 60s and the 70s and into the 80s that carries over now more than a quarter century later. And that narrative is one that suggests that there's still a bifurcation of race in the city, that everything comes down to black-white relationships, when in fact the relationships now are substantially more complicated and substantially more nuanced. What's working uh, in Boston at this point is that there's a very clear recognition on the part of public authorities and uh, some people in the private sector uh, that uh, racist patterns of behavior uh, are not to be tolerated and that when something happens, one reacts quickly, one condemns it, one uh, tries to develop a way of uh, preventing it from happening again, um, and then the city tries to uh, continue to move forward to heal. Um, those kinds of responses happen almost instantaneously anytime something of that happens. What is not working as well yet um, are the efforts to uh, fully uh, assimilate uh, the a much wider range of individuals um, who come into Boston into positions of real power, uh, positions of real authority. Um, one looks at uh, corporations, universities, major hospitals, um, uh, some public entities still, and one does not see highly qualified people of color who are available uh, filling top-level positions. And one does not see a clear way for a young person in the city uh, to climb a ladder of opportunity that's going to place them in a leadership position in a city that is now uh, made up of individuals um, who are as likely to be people of color and or immigrants as they are likely to be uh, the traditional groups that have uh, managed to achieve power in this city. I had done a lot of uh, uh, things prior to being attacked on City Hall Plaza that were about social justice and fairness and equity. And I have done a lot of things since that have focused on social justice and fairness and equity and also design and how our cities work and who gets to manage our cities and who is heard in the course of uh, shaping uh, the way we live with each other. And uh, to have so much of my life focus on just that one moment seems uh, very ironic in the context of uh, the other things that I've tried to do, not only in Boston, but around the country and, and in other parts of the world. I have opportunities now uh, as uh, an educator uh, to engage a number of people who want to further values of social justice, and that's what I'm doing. Uh, I, I did that when I was a young kid and a teenager, and I'm doing it now, and there is a lot of work that needs to be done and a lot of sharing of strategies and of ideas and of policies and practices and mostly of ethical values uh, that uh, we really need to be talking about, especially now, um, and I'm grateful to have the opportunity to be able to do that.